I played 100 days in Minecraft, but not just normal Minecraft. I'm playing RLCraft, one of the hardest mod packs in Minecraft's history. For those of you who don't know, RLCraft is one of the hardest mod packs Minecraft has ever had. It adds a dragon that can one-shot you, giant not-so-friendly <gasps> creatures, battle towers filled with riches, just to name a few no. of the things added. And not to mention, you can literally die from anything at any time. Not even farming is safe. With all these dangers, will I survive? How far can I make it? You'll have to watch to find out. We wake up on day one, luckily spawning next to a village. Unfortunately though, it's in a savanna, and we're already starting to feel the heat of the environment. I don't get any time to worry about the temperature though, because we have some untamely neighbors that almost take us out. Luckily for us though, some ages, which are the village guardians, come and do some damage to the crake, getting it down low enough to the point where we could kill it with our fist. I go and I receive its meat, getting some weird crake meat, whatever that means, deciding to throw it into the furnace because I wanted to eat it. Eating it gave me some strange buff called repulsion. I don't really know what that means, but as if I needed any help getting people to be repulsed by me. At this point, I discovered the skill menu. RLCraft works a little bit differently than vanilla Minecraft. In vanilla Minecraft, the only thing stopping your progression is you. But in RLCraft, in order to do even the simplest of tasks, you have to unlock the proper levels to do so. Meaning that something as simple as collecting wheat requires sufficient EXP slash levels to unlock. After that, we head into this tower where we go to bed for the night, so that way our spawn gets set in the village, so when we inevitably die, we wake up here instead of somewhere else. At the top of the tower, we found some starter gear, including some iron swords, bows, and leather armor. We unfortunately can't use any of the iron gear or bows until we level them up some more, but it's a good start nonetheless. I decided to throw some of the little XP I had into upgrading agility, so now that way we can use the bow. We also managed to find a clock in the village, which will come in handy in helping us keep track of the days. I then ran around and I collected some stones off the ground so I could turn them into cobblestone, so that way I could skip the flint tool stage and go straight into a cobble pickaxe, before making sure that I activate the waystone in the town so we have quick travel, before heading to sleep because it was a late night. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention, every time you sleep it can spawn a reaper, and a reaper will blind you and fear you before it slaughters you with you standing no chance. Unfortunately for the reaper, because we got the bow early on, I shot blindly in the dark and managed to kill him. Now that that's taken care of, we can sleep safely without any worries. The Reaper really struck a chord in me because the next day I wanted to make some weapons. Weapons in our Railcraft work a little differently. We went and put some string and sticks together to make a handle and then combined it with five stone to make a rapier, which was our first proper weapon that we could use to defend ourselves. I then noticed that we had a lock chest in our house. So I went and I chopped some wood into sticks so I could make some bobby pins to pick the lock. Inside the lock chest was a buttload of wool, which will come in handy making bandages. After that, I dug out the floor inside my house so I could get down in there, get some rocks, and make a little mine. Before crafting myself a wooden shield and using the stones that I got from the mine to make it into a stone brace shield. With my new shield equipped and my sword already on me, I had murder on my mind. But first, I wanted to choose a class. In our Railcraft, once you reach level 5, you can select a class from either mining, crafting, and combat. The class you choose directly impacts the amount of XP switch levels you get from that action, drastically increasing the amount gained. For us, the most obvious choice was combat. With our new combat abilities, I decided to literally kill everything and anything that I came across to get as much XP as possible. While I was doing it, I ended up running into this strange desert temple. Also, it's probably a good time to explain how the temperature works. This circle right here is how hot slash cold we're feeling. If it gets too high or low, we will be affected by both hyper and hypothermia respectively. Meaning that while we're exploring, we have to be extraordinarily conscious of our temperature or else face certain death. Back to the weird structure, it's covered in spawners, so since it was daytime and nothing was spawning, I went through and I broke them all, getting tons of XP. It also had tons of chests, where we managed to get 4 diamonds, and we ended up finding an entire set of fully enchanted chainmail armor. When I got home, I dumped some levels into defense so that way I could wear my chainmail armor. After that, I dumped even more levels into attack, getting it all the way up to level 8 so I could use the iron sword that I got with the set. Meaning I can finally get rid of this worthless piece of trash stone rapier. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. With our new gear, I head into the desert and I kill everything I see. Killing these giant four-legged mutant things, giving me some joust meat. So I guess they're joust? We spent the rest of the day killing some joust before getting our first taste of hyperthermia. Hyperthermia does a large amount of tick damage, and seeing that our head can only have three hearts, we don't want to take any tick damage. The only thing we can do to cool ourselves down is dip in some water at the moment, because that's all we have access to. So I hope our character ain't wearing any socks, because his feet are about to be wet constantly. Before I head home, I decided to put some levels into mining iron, because I found an iron ore on the way back. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that we also have to micromanage our thirst. Literally everything in this game is trying to kill you. If you don't drink water constantly, your vision goes blurry and you eventually die. 
I then decided that I wanted to expand my mine into the basement, which wasn't a great idea since it led into a gigantic ravine which I was definitely underprepared for. But I'm a man, so I'm gonna go on through like it's not an issue until it kills me, which it definitely will. While I'm using my bow to kill something at range, I ended up taking some critical damage to my head from this rat, making this the perfect time to explain how the health system works. Every single one of your body parts have their own health bar. When your arms and your legs take damage, you'll be affected by weakness and slowness accordingly. But if your head or your body takes damage and it takes more than three hearts of damage, you will immediately die. Meaning that that rat almost domed us. Oh, and if the caves weren't dangerous enough as is, if you are in any sort of darkness, a Gru will spawn and is kill you. <laughs> the Gru of course killed us, but we got our stuff back. But that's not even just the beginning of the problems with mining. Mining itself isn't even safe because it can spawn a creature that will immediately kill you because you killed its children or something by mining. The creatures are called Geonashes, and they're essentially living ore, and only pickaxes do decent damage to them, but unfortunately for us, ours is about to break. So we take several deaths trying to get our stuff back, before it despawns and we can finally get our loot back. Or so I thought, because something called a neck came out of nowhere and two shot me, so I went back down there to get my stuff, before getting tag teamed by a chupacabra and another neck. At this point, I went down one last time to get her stuff before getting killed yet again by another Gru, and at this point, I was at the edge of rage quitting. But ultimately, I swallowed some copium and decided it's not a big deal and we can just make some new stuff. We can always restart anew as if nothing ever happened. So that's exactly what I did. And I decided to use my new gear to kill an aerosaur, which is like a giant dinosaur type thing. For some reason, I started taking damage and I didn't really know why until I ended up dying from something called a cockatrice. I couldn't afford to start back at Flint Tools since it's already six days in. So I went back and I got my stuff and I decided to run back hoping they didn't follow me. Why are you running? Why are you running? Which they of course did. So I tried to go inside of my house and I used some of the leather I got from killing things to try to make some armor. So I at least had a little bit of protection. I then made myself a shield and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go take this cockatrice out. So I peeked my head out the door, trying to see where they're at to see that they were just waiting for me the entire time. Hi, how are you? So I broke my window open, trying to get some cheap shots and thank God we're safe in here and he can't get in here, right? <laughs> I panically run to the door, spam clicking it closed, luckily locking him inside before going to sleep to try to heal up, hoping he'll be gone in the morning. Unfortunately for us, he's still there. So I decided to break through the roof and try to take him out from the top where I could actually have an advantage. Luckily for me, that worked out and I managed to kill him. But I realized that I couldn't have the peace of mind living in this town, knowing that another one of those birds were out there. So I decided to go out looking for him. You killed my brother, your sons of a bitch. He didn't seem too happy about me killing his friend, so he followed me straight to my house, almost managing to get inside, so I got on top of the roof and just tried killing him that way, when he knocked me off and he avenged his brother by taking me out. Luckily for me though, our trap that we had set from the last one worked, and he ended up in the exact same room, so we just got up on top and killed him too. After killing him, I checked the clock and I saw that we're officially on day 8. I then went out and I wanted to explain to you guys how the bounty board works. Essentially, there's these little pieces of paper that have requests on them and when you fill them, you get large rewards. You can fill these requests depending on if you have the resources to do so. For us, the only one that we could fill was kill six zombies. So I grabbed it and I set out to kill those six zombies so I could get the reward. So I went back into our mine below our house where I mined a bunch more iron and some coal. And while I was down there, I spotted this weird glowing human-like figure. I went over there and I investigated and I ended up finding that there's a full set of chain armor under our house, buried. I swear this isn't scripted. Even though it seems like I planted this, somehow this was under our house originally and I didn't even realize it was there. So I of course adjourned myself with that chain armor before spending the rest of the day getting even more iron ore from our basement. The next day, I made myself an iron rapier and an iron shield. I didn't have the right level to use the iron shield, but luckily for me, I was level eight from smelting all the iron ore. So all I did was level up once in defense, meaning that now we're level eight in defense. So we can wear iron armor and use iron shields. So because I could use iron armor now, I decided to make myself an iron helmet and an iron chest plate. Since those are the two most important things, because if we get hit in those places, we can be insta-killed. And it's a good thing I made that armor because we have an invader, some weird thing called an etchetic. I don't even know how to say that, decided to attack us through our window and affected us the plague. Oh! The plague almost killed us, but luckily for me, I had some cooked maca meat, which turns out to give you absorption. So it kept us alive just barely so I could banish myself and heal myself up and then go and kill off the etchichik. I still have no clue how to say that. I then went into the mines and I mined a bunch more iron before getting into another altercation with the Gru, but this time we're equipped for it and we took him out with little to no issues. So I was confident. Now I stood no chance in dying from Gru's ever again, or so I thought, because this next Gru 
took me to the edge of death without somehow coming up on top. The next day, I decided I needed some iron leggings to protect myself some more before going out and taking on a battle tower so I could finish the bounty that I still had in my inventory of killing six zombies. I killed several zombies, and then I used my stone pickaxe to break the spawners, which took forever. I also then checked if I had the bounty done and saw that it was completed, and that I just had to go back to the bounty board with the piece of paper to get my reward. Before I went home, since I was already out, I wanted to go and finish exploring the desert temple. I went inside. Unfortunately, it was probably not a great idea since it was pretty close to night. All the spawners were spawning things, meaning that I was absolutely screwed. I got caught by a rare skeleton, which just decimated me. I managed to sneak myself over in the shadow of the night, quietly crouching my way down where I could grab some of my things just enough where I could fight my way through to get the rest of my stuff. After I got the rest of my stuff, I was chased out by the angry residents, barely making it out with the skin left on my back. They almost made me into one of them, tearing me down to nothing but bones. The next day, I went and fulfilled the bounty, getting the rewards, so I got a fishing rod and some emeralds, which was really useful. I then crafted my first heart crystal from nine crystal shards that I got from killing some skeletons inside of that dungeon there. I then crafted a compass with some iron and redstone, and now I can see my coordinates, meaning that I can go farther away from home without having to worry about getting lost. Then I went back into my basement, where I ran into a mob covered in purple flames. By the way, for contacts, the purple flame means that they're essentially mini-bosses. It's rare variants of mobs that essentially do more damage, have special effects often, like slowing and stuff like that, and are just overall a lot stronger. Regardless of me knowing that information, I decided I could probably take it, it was a mistake. Luckily for me, after going down there for a fourth time, I didn't die this time because he despawned. So I got all of my stuff and I pretended like that didn't happen because it was awful. So I decided I wanted to go and destroy the spawner to make sure that no one ever had to deal with that kind of crazy spider ever again. But little did I know, bro had his whole gang pull up. I'm joking. I somehow managed to take care of all the spiders and pull through without any issues. So I went over there and the spawner destroyed itself. So it turns out in RL craft, when you kill enough mobs from a spawner, the spawner just destroys itself. So that way you can't set up mob farms with them. While I was down there, I made sure to mine some iron now that all the spiders were taken care of. And I used that iron to make myself an iron saber which is a really good weapon comparatively to the rapier. The next day, I put some levels into magic, and then I wanted to go and explore this dungeon. Inside the dungeon was tons of just normal Minecraft mob spawners with some cool loot like a silver boomerang and a diamond throwing spear. Well, a diamond javelin. Whoa. Also, next to an enderman spawner was a god bow. Well, at least for us oh. it was. It was multi-shot and strafe, which made it so we shot I mean, faster whoa, and shot what more that? arrows at one time. Inside though, there was a bunch of zombies there. One of them was a rare sticky zombie, and he managed to pull the weapon directly out of our hand. What? Meaning that we had to use our bow and the boomerang that we just got in order to kill them all off. I then started killing some cave spiders where I got a really lucky drop. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's actually like super rare. Uh, doesn't it like get me immunity to poison? How do I, how do I equip it? How do I equip it? Bobbles. Oh, I have immunity to poison now. Yes. I decided with my immunity to poison that I wanted to push forward and try to kick out some more spiders. Unfortunately for me though, there's these things called darklings, which are essentially face huggers from hell that will absolutely melt you. I hate them. <laughs> these things are so annoying. Unfortunately, a face hugger did kill us, but we went back sneaking in and got all of our stuff and pushed farther. Oh my God, that was so worth it. Oh, that's actually like incredibly worth. Getting a diamond helmet and a miner's ring, which is that's so good tacky. because it gives us haste. Oh, it gives me haste? Oh, that is, that is, that is nice. Shortly after that, I oh. left the dungeon where I ended up running into these What's weird this? tent villagers that had some what? bronze and had bronze? a full chest of meds. Oh, that's a lot of meds. They won't mind me taking them all, will they? Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! <laughs> The next day, I made myself an iron pickaxe, which ended up being thin. Alrighty then. I also used my heart crystal, giving myself, myself an extra an heart, heart, before making some return squirrels out of some ender pearls, golden nuggets, and paper. I then noticed that the extra heart went on my head. Oh, it put it on her head? Oh, sick. I then decided that I wanted to go back and try to do the battle tower. We could try the battle tower. 
Before getting oh. surprised, Shoot. seeing that a dragon is flying around the battle that's tower. Good. So we'll have to be extra mm. careful while we're going through it. Uh, that's really bad, actually, yeah. So I made my way through the battle tower, making it through a couple more layers without any issues, up until we got to a floor full of skeletons. And I will say, if I didn't leave when I did, I would probably have been boned. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I then went home, and I made myself an anvil. Ugh. Realizing I needed building 12 in order that's, to use it. Yeah, that's that's disgusting. The next day, we got attacked by a venture wrapper at our front door. Before we made a soul gazer so we could research creatures. And then I used some aloe vera to make some better bandages. And I made a summoning staff, even though I won't be able to use it yet because I don't have anything researched. I went and researched the ages, getting him up 100 points. So I only need to do it a couple more times before I can summon him. Oh. I only do that 10 times and I'm chilling. I then collected some poppies that I noticed were near the village because I had an idea that I could combine them with lapis to make them into purple dye. I think I can make the better warp scroll with this. I can. Before finding a dungeon right next to it and deciding I wanted to go inside. Also, there's a dungeon in here. Inside the dungeon were tons of afrits, which are like little imp demon things that shoot fireballs at you that burn you to death. But we can handle them now because we have our awesome bow. I decided to go down inside of it using my water bucket to keep me from falling to my death or being burned. I slowly made my way down, where I ended up face to face with a bunch of wargs. Wargs are like giant wolves, but down there we found a lot of cool things. Oh, recall potions. Like some recall potions, which teleport you back to your spawn point. Oh, a golden apple. And some golden apples, which give us some really good absorption, so we have some extra hearts. And of course, regeneration, which will heal our hearts. But it wasn't all butterflies and rainbows. My world. Everyone's a pony, and they all eat rainbows and poop butterflies. Oh, no, 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 He got in, he got in, shit, shit. Because we eventually ended up dying from one of the wargs that snuck between our rocks. I snuck back down, and I managed to get all of her stuff, and managed to block off the entrance just in time, because I saw that there was many more in there who pathfinded towards us. After that, I found a magic mirror, which acts as a infinite recall potion. I just have to be level 32 in magic to use it, which is literally never going to happen. <laughs> Along with some more recall potions and some diamond pet armor, which we can smelt down into just diamonds. Whoa. An iron glaive for a diamond fishing rod and 25 torches. Yeah. After that, I got a bounty request to make an iron glaive for a diamond fishing rod and 25 torches. So of course I filled that because I was just, I enjoyed having torches so Gruz didn't get me. And a diamond fishing rod I knew would come in useful just way down the road when we got level 16 gathering. Let's see. Perfect. I then went back into that little dungeon there with some lockpicks to finish looting it. And there we go. Where I ended up getting some wolf armor and a saddle, Ooh, which was really useful. Hey, right, we got a saddle. When I headed back out, it was pretty stormy, so we ended up getting attacked by something called a oh Zephyr. God. We killed it, and it dropped its Jeez, arm or something, which can be used as a custom weapon attachment. I then combined the roses and some lapis lazuli to make some purple dye, so I can make some warp scrolls. These make it so I can teleport to any warp stone on the entire map. After that, I decided I was going to finally leave the savanna and go somewhere that's a bit colder. Oh my, I'm, I'm really having a rough time in this in the savannah i'm i'm so happy and so, like i'm so excited to get out of this place just to get away from this biome while i was exploring i found a weird Why? temple like thing that had a warp stone in front of it so i decided to run inside it turned out to be a trap full of creepers which nearly took us out there's nothing in here Oh, I'm, oh my god. I'm, I'm, nope. I thought I was safe, but hyperthermia got us. <laughs> Luckily for me though, since the warp stone was there, we just respawned right next to our stuff. So we grabbed everything we had and we left. Oh, you respawned at the waypoint. Oh, cool. Okay, so all I lose is my pride. That's fine. <laughs> I then found another tent settlement with some villages in it that had a locked chest. Lucky for me though, I had some bobby pins. <laughs> oh, please. Can I get in here with these six lock picks? That would be amazing. Let's go. Oh, six diamonds! What? Oh, that was so worth. And man, am I happy I brought those lockpicks because we got six diamonds, which is the most that we've had up to this point. I then decided that I wanted to run through the desert to try to make my way to somewhere safer. I ended up finding a really cool desert temple and I wanted to explore it. This is a temple? Yeah. Clearly, I haven't learned from my last mistakes because literally everything in this game wants to kill you and there's no such thing as just cool loot. It's always traps. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. While I was panicking to get my way out, I started to get mobbed by skeletons. But it was okay, because I was managing to try to hold myself together and not panic. That is until... <gasps> Whatever the hell that is came out and tried killing me. Please don't kill me. Oh, We managed to kill it, so all I had to do was escape. What? But oh yeah, it's a trap base, so now it's covered in lava. And in my panic, I ended up dying from hyperthermia. What? What the f***? After a while of trying, I managed to sneak in there with a water bucket and a pickaxe and get my stuff back. I then started making my way to the desert again, where I ended up seeing that there was two red joust fighting each other. Are they fighting over territory? Whoa, look at that. Oh, cool. Oh, please don't see me. Just minding my business. I'm pretty sure I have some oak trees to the side here. Oh, birch trees. You, oh man, I have never been so happy to see a birch tree in my life. I finally saw the promised land, a deciduous biome. Please. Finally a biome where I can let my feet dry because my feet were starting to get pruny from constantly being in water to cool myself down. Oh, sheep. I started exploring the biome where I found lots of wildlife and most notably, my temperature was finally not in the reds. Thank God, because I don't think I could handle another minute of that scorching sun inside the savannah or desert. Ooh. Holy <laughs> What is that? What the f is that? Nope. <laughs> I'd rather spend all my eternity in the desert than do that. No. No thank you. I'm okay. I am A-OK. -okay. I went that way. I'm going this way. <laughs> That's what we're not doing. Oh, here we go. This is more my pace. Oh, this is not more my pace. Oh, that was smart with the water. Very smart with the water. Oh, he got his buddy. He got his buddy and he's coming back for more. I'm getting out of here. Oh, they move so fast, though. Why? Why, God? Oh. oh, my God. That is the most perfect nymph I've ever seen. Heal me. Please do the nymph dance. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm dancing. I'm doing the nymph dance. Please. 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 I'm begging you. Please. My legs are broken. I'm dancing around like a weirdo. She feels pity for us. Oh, let's go. Full heal. Everything wants to kill you in this mod pack all the time. Except for nymphs. Nymphs are pretty friendly. I love nymphs. I'm a nymphomaniac. <laughs> Is this a normal village? Oh, okay. See, this is... <laughs> yeah, push them away. Get his ugly ass out of here. Inside the new village, I ended up finding a really cool house that I wanted to live in. Oh, that's so much wool. Yes. I think we found our new home. A home that's not constantly killing us with just overheating. Right, I don't have to dunk my head underwater every three seconds and still boiling. I'm turning into soup in our old place. Soup. I then decided to make a bunch of bandages before taking my first night's sleep in my brand new home. New home! Yeah! Yeah! Only problem is I can't find the waystone. Oh! Also, really useful. <laughs> not this guy again. <laughs> He's looking around me. <laughs> is there not a waystone here? This is like a huge settlement to not have a waystone. Oh, there it is! Yes! New home! <laughs> Zed Zorark. This is the place to be. We finally settled into a home that we can enjoy without having to die constantly from the temperature. So, because we're here, I decided I wanted to take on the battle tower that resides just outside the village. All right, let's see if we can't take out a couple floors of this battle tower real quick. I made my way into the battle tower, destroying a couple spawners before noticing that there's another purple spider. Call an ambulance, call an ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> Wow, that's insane. Wow, oh my God, he hits hard. 
Why is he so strong? Oh wait, don't they become docile out in, sun in sunlight? The spider ran away, so I decided I wanted to jump in and get my stuff, only to be attacked by tons of zombies wearing my armor and using my Why weapons against me. Oh, they're wearing my armor, aren't they? Yeah, and my bow. <laughs> I think I can just jump in and get my pickaxe, maybe. I managed to jump in and get a few things. Oh, yep. But the horde was only getting larger and larger. Dude, what is that? What is that cluster bundle of zombies? And then another purple one came out. This time being a zombie. Oh no, oh that's not good. Purple ones are bad, purple ones are bad, purple ones are bad, purple ones are bad, purple ones are bad. Who seemingly had thorns, meaning that every time I hit him, Ow. I took damage. Does he have thorns? He must. Not just that, he can also place cobwebs, stopping right. oh, me in no. my place. Please. No. Flip a dip. Why, why, where's my sword? Oh, come on, dude. In my panic, I managed to open up the quest menu, freezing my screen, and throwing my only weapon away, oh, no. which essentially signed my own death certificate. But we just respawned at the waypoint, jumped in the water, and swam around getting all of our stuff. While we were doing it, some ages actually took care of what? the purple zombie, which then I learned oh, yeah, are called blight like zombies. Oh, no. Essentially, any mob covered in purple flames, they're blight versions of that mob. Also, while I was down there, I ended up finding a little puppers. I ended up leaving him there because he's probably safer there than he is with me, seeing that I get attacked by Grim Reapers every time I sleep. Whoa, there's a puppers down there. I unfortunately couldn't find my armor, which means that I was pretty much boned with the lack there of defense that I needed to protect myself. Luckily for me though, I decided to loot around town, trying to just find some you random things thing? to help myself make some what more armor. Thing? And I what ended up thing? finding nearly a what full set, only show. needing to get my booties. Let me get my armor back, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's just decoration in it. That's not decoration. <laughs> yes, please. With my new armor equipped, I decided to go back into the battle tower to try to get my booties. Why are there so many of you? This is not okay. I just want my booties back. But I accidentally released the horde. Oh, that was a mistake. I had the bright idea to try to run around the back of the battle tower and sneak in now that they were running at the front. It was a bad idea. Save A! I was pretty annoyed to say the very least. Awesome. Awesome. All right, well, I'll be back when I, uh, when I manage to get in here. I then messed up and forgot to record because I was stressed out preparing for an exam in order to get into school. So I managed to completely forget to unpause my recording. I forgot to record. I made a soul stone. <laughs> I just, oh man, well, I'm stupid. Got all of our stuff back too. It, it, it was not costless though. We lost a lot, a lot of stuff. Losing all of day 27. And because I was frustrated with my exam coming up and screwing up my recording, I decided to stop my recording and to pick it up after I took some time to just chill out. That was a huge mistake because I ended up losing four days. I lost the rest of day 27 all the way to day 31, which sucked so bad. But I'm gonna prevail because I have to finish editing this video and post it. On the days that we lost, I didn't do anything too major other than making a speed ring out of some gold and lapis to make a potion ring, and then combining it with sugar and a redstone block to turn it into a speed ring. The speed ring gives us a permanent speed boost. That's why you're noticing in the top left corner, there's a speed boost. We also made a quiver, which holds arrows, so we don't have to have them in our inventory space. Because now we have a bunch of baubles, I'll take the time to explain how they work. The baubles in RL Craft act similarly to Terraria. So if you're a Terraria player, you'll already know what these are, but they're essentially accessories that you can put on your character to give yourself some boost. A good example would be the obsidian skull that gives you flame resistance or the Beazar and miner's ring that we got before which give us haste and poison immunity the baubles can also be reforged and have quality on them like they can be jagged and guarding and warded which gives you more defense or more damage for us because i wanted to get those boosts i decided to make the potion ring and a quiver to try to get some of those reforging boosts Day 32 and day 33 were spent trying to conquer the battle tower. We didn't get through very much of it and we took so many deaths, but we didn't come out of it in a total loss because we made so much progress towards the top and we got enough levels where we could finally unlock level 12 in buildings so we could place down an anvil. So I went to our old house and I grabbed the anvil that we had made before. And then the next day I placed it down inside of our house. I then smelted some diamond pet armor. I, I remember seeing on a uh, union or union or whatever video that diamond pet armor smelted is like, Phenomenal. I don't know if they nerfed it though. Let's see. No, that's really good. 
That's seven diamonds. What? Oh, no way. After that, I used the anvil so I could repair our really good bow. And then I went into the library with some lockpicks to pick a chest that had a bunch of books in it. Was it worth it? Depth Strider Stream. Oh, Depth Strider 3 is 100% worth it. What else we got? Oh, for the bow. Oh. I put the power four enchantment book onto our bow, making it even stronger. I then went and cut down a tree so I could make some bobby pins when something unfortunate happened. There's an endangered species right there. Did I just kill that pig? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He twerk on his corpse. I went and crafted the bobby pins, and then I bring the bobby pins into the battle tower and went to all of the cleared floors that had locked chest and unlocked them all, getting some pretty good loot. Ooh, silver helmet. Ooh, ooh slime balls. The slime balls I'm actually like really excited for. Oh my God, that means we can make some cooling goo. Ooh, ooh. ooh. Oh, dude, shut off. We have a map now? <laughs> oh, yes. That is coming with us. Oh, more slime balls also. Heck yeah. Before taking another death. Yeah, like that. That's not good. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went back in with iron armor and an ax and got very overwhelmed. So I ended up having to abandon ship. Oh my ship. God, there's so many. Abandon ship. <laughs> but eventually I got most of our stuff back. All right, boys, we got most of our stuff back. We did lose a lot of it. <laughs> But we got we got all the important stuff at least. Um, yeah, it's been unfortunate though. I then decided to jump into the fray right below where all the skeletons were to try to get some of the XP I got from killing them earlier. And let me get ready to drink this and then run over there in case it goes weird. Like this, like that. It goes like that. <laughs> the next day, I decided to make our first diamond weapon and for some reason even though i knew the saber was better oh, i wanted to give the rapier another chance so i decided to make a diamond rapier regretfully the rapier seems better higher attack speed on paper it seems better but i find the saber i don't know whatever commit into it i guess and commit to it i did because i threw all the enchantments i had available for it onto it including subject pe3 and mending so that way it uses my xp to repair itself instead of breaking also, I forgot to mention that on the days that I lost, during that time, I also finished researching the ages. So now we can use our summoning staff to summon them. If we hold down right click, then we can summon a couple ages using this green bar, which is acting like mana. The ages go in there for us and do the same thing that they would normally for the villagers, running around and just trying to kill things. Their health bar is pretty low though, and they're on a timer, so they can't really do all that much for us. But regardless, they become a meat shield that becomes a target for the skeletons that isn't our head. There you go. Now you're doing something useful. Ooh, that's a blight. A blight spawn, so I sent our ages in. Did it kill him already? Okay, I thought it killed my boy already. It did. It killed my boy already. F***ing blight. We managed to somehow take out the blight skeleton, but unfortunately, we ended up falling into the floor below, which was full of skeletons. Oh, shoot. That's not good. But we took care of the skeletons, and we got out of the floor harm-free. So then I decided to continue to make my way up the tower. What is that? Emerald amulet with strengthening in it. Ooh, baby. I finally got to the second of the top floor of the battle tower, and I knew this is when loot starts getting really good. Because as we got up realized. further, the loot got better and better. But for some reason, when I opened up the chest, a loud groan happened, and then a bunch of explosions, and I seemed to peeve someone off really bad. Holy shoot. <sighs> I don't know what's happening. I don't want to be part of it. What just happened, bro? Stuff started exploding. That was an angry golem, I think. Let's get back up there really quick. When I got back up there, I noticed that the golem broke the chest that we were trying to get opened. That is a lot of loot. And that there was a bunch of diamonds all over the floor. I get to that without dying. So of course I debated running in there and trying to grab it and then getting out as fast as possible before he killed us. And of course I opened the chest again to see if there's anything left. Bad idea. No. Uh, what do we get? That's, oh my God, that is so many diamonds. That is so many diamonds. Oh, I gotta get back up there. There's more stuff up there. I gotta get, I gotta get back up there. I gotta go, 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 go. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta get up there, I gotta get up there. 
When I got to the top, I noticed that there was a bunch of lapis blocks, XP potions, and a miner's ring. So of course I grabbed them all. Oh. And then I decided I wanted to go up to the top because maybe the golem didn't break the chest on the top and there was a bunch of stuff inside I could steal. And let me be honest, there's a reason I don't play Bed Wars. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. After I died, I went over to get all my stuff, and I noticed that a bunch of rocks were guarding it, picking my body apart way. like vultures. Oh, are you... Gotta be crudding me. But it seems they had a hankering for fresh meat, because they immediately jumped me, picking me up in the air and tearing me apart, and me having to just punch them to death in order to get them to let me go. Ah, oh, break my legs, thanks. I got all of our stuff that we lost, but unfortunately, it's been so long now that I guaranteed everything that would be up on the top of the tower has despawned. So I decided, I guess it was a lost cause. Quite unfortunate, I actually really wanted to get back up and get that stuff. I mean, I could probably still go for it right now, right? So I'm gonna try to run up there now. Maybe we make it in time, who knows? I doubt it though. Oh, there he is. Seems like the stuff's despawned. Oh, I'm gonna be really dumb and try. <laughs> Seeing if I can't manage to kill this golem somehow. How much XP we'll get if we actually manage to kill that golem, right? That's like what I'm thinking, even though it's <laughs> it's gonna probably kill me. This is where boys become men, and men have holes in the chest from being stupid. Wakey, 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 it's time for school. Oh, <sighs> I can't believe you've done this. Oh, yeah. Oh, he is angry, but I nearly one shot him. I thought, I look, I look like I took out like half his health. Oh, yeah. Holy. Heck, that was close. Oh my gosh. Oh, I fucking... I fell. He's healing? Oh my god. You can calm down now, buddy. I, 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 time out. Time out. Time out. My legs are broken. Time out. I call time out. I call time out, damn it. Time out. Calm down. You calm the fuck down. There's a this is such a bad idea, dude. He is so angry. Holy... Ugh. Oh, fluff a duff, fluff a duff, fluff a duff. Oh my god, he's still coming for me, too. Holy, holy. What's his health at? That's what I'm curious. He healed back to a full? Dude, what? He <laughs> just destroyed our entire, like, civilization, dude. Oh my god, I might die. Since we were out of arrows and our health was really low, I decided I would save myself the trouble of dying and just go back to the house. By the way, this is all the diamonds we got. The next day, I decided Ooh. to take on an Alpha Maka. Along with that, I decided to run around killing some more things before running home and making myself an anvil. I then used that anvil to create a reforging station. I spent the rest of the day reforging all my sword. gear so I could get some better quality on it to get some boost. I, yep, that's good. <laughs> I like sharp. Sharp, good. After Why that, I went out to explore there? and I ended up having to perform an escapade to get away from a rogue dragon that was near oh. our village for some reason. Not good, not good, not good. That's a dragon. Why was there a dragon? What the heck? I then spent some more time exploring where I ended up finding a new village. And I activated village the waystone there. So now we added one from. more waystone to our web of waystones so we can travel farther around the map easier. Nope, this is a new one. Nice. I then discovered this new biome that was oh, purple. Wow. It was very strange because everything was just this kill. purpley tinge and there was tons of poisonous deadly creatures there. I then placed down some water to cool my feet down and ended up pushing these aerosaurs out of the way. So I apologized to them before noticing that there was a dragon nearby. Sorry, fellas. Oh, that's a dragon. That's a dragon. That's a dragon. That's a dragon. I am a-okay. Happy I realized that before it became a problem. That thing could have literally just insta-killed us. Just game over. No coming back from it. I then wanted to crack into this little desert temple. Oh, there's a blight in there. I killed the blight and I got 11 levels of XP. Look at all those levels. Yes, a village. Oh shoot, that's a dragon. Oh my god, not like the hippogriffs are really good. Oh, there he is. Yep, there's a dragon. He's angry too. I'm gonna hit this waystone. I'm getting out of here. Oh, oh, somewhere that's not, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, somewhere that's not desert. Oh my gosh, oh yeah, ice. I kept exploring and I ended up finding some ice, meaning that we were finally in a colder biome. So I kept exploring that biome and found out it was a boreal forest, meaning that now we can find some crazy cool things that I've been looking for this entire time. 
Oh yeah, we're in a winter biome. Beauty. Absolute beauty. Holy crud, I'm freezing to death. Wow, I really am too. Whoa. While exploring this new biome, I found something called a Bobeco, which was a weird polar bear-esque creature. I think they're friendly. It's a Bobeco. But I decided to sick the boys on him because I wanted to see what he dropped. Get him, boys. Mess him up. Okay, well, he didn't put up as much of a fight as I thought it would. Used to create frost. Ooh, flip a dip. My ankles are shattered. That, like, that broke my left foot. Not my left. That's my favorite toe. What in the bloody hell are you? Let's do it, mate. Let's go. Pixin? What in the world? I wasn't paying too great attention while I was exploring, getting distracted by something green in the distance. What in the... Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. <gasps> uh, uh, that was uh, not okay. <laughs> Oh my god, I almost threw up my life flash before my eyes. Alright, fellas, so here's the plan. I'm thinking we make a mob farm. We we need XP. I'm feeling like a mob farm would be our best bet. I think I have an idea of what we can do to make a good one. I decided that making a mob farm was probably the best idea because we needed some XP because I wanted to do enchantments. So I went and I made a bunch of buckets and then I went to the desert where there was a large lava yeah, pool I so. and I collected eight buckets full of lava. I then collected a bunch of sand to make some glass. I built myself a little area with some droppers in it so I could put some buckets in it full of lava and press a button. And that way I could fill it up with lava and it would spawn afrits. And when I pressed the button again, all the lava would disappear and I could kill the afrits and get the XP and items without them melting. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's go. Please work. After a while, it eventually worked and it spawned some efforts. Oh my gosh, it worked. Meaning that now we can get a bunch of XP from them. Oh my gosh. So I was very excited because now we can get some levels easily. While I was killing them, I realized that I wanted to make an ooze farm to increase my efficiency of XP gain. Next up, let's go and see if we can find a cold biome and get some ooze. Wherever this was is where we're trying to get to. I ended up teleporting to the wrong waystone and something really bad happened. I... You're kidding. Since we died at the waystone, I decided that I probably could go back and get some of my stuff. Maybe it wasn't all burned. So I kept teleporting in and out using the waystones, getting as much stuff as I could between each death. And I managed to get pretty much everything except for our speed ring, which we lost. So we'll have to make another one eventually. Oh, I'm getting most of our stuff out here. I got most of our stuff out. Where else did I go? And where did I go on the second time? Did I get all my stuff? Is that everything? I think so. Oh, I thought we lost everything. I thought, I thought, I thought we lost everything. I thought we were back at square one. We only lost some, if any. So it looks like we lost our speed ring permanently. That's, it looks like that's the one thing we actually fully lost, which is okay. Like, I mean, I can make another speed ring. It's not the end of the world. Could have been a whole heck of a lot worse. Just suck, but I'm not crying over it. Okay, okay, yeah, this is something. Oh, what the heck? Yo, this is definitely something. After a long search, we finally found a village inside of a winter biome. Something interesting indeed. In the village was lots of cool loot, including some books. Oh my gosh. What? What the heck? What? Also, I just wanted to let you guys know that the second half of this video is going to go a lot quicker because it's mostly just XP grinding, building mob farms, and exploring. Not much interesting happens other than a few key moments. So I'm deciding to just squeeze it all together and compound it into a really quick format. Also, we found the ooze. Oh, there's the stuff I'm looking for. So now we can finally make an ooze farm. Yes, <laughs> ooze, that's what we were looking for. Uh, whoa. Oh, there's a waystone here. Oh, yes. Oh, that's awesome. Also in the village was this giant castle full of pillagers. Is this a, what? This pillagers? I then saw some more interesting things inside the village, including netherrack. Okay, well. Oh, yay. Is that netherrack? Shut your mouth. I need to get over there, though, before um, cinders start to spawn. Like yesterday. I need to be over there yesterday. I grabbed all the uh, netherrack because I knew gosh, I could make a spawner out of it later on. Spoiler alert. I never used it. I'll have to use it in the next 100 days if you guys want to see it. Which reminds me, if you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow and it'll give me motivation to make more. If you want to see another 100 days of RRL craft, just let me know in the comments section or make sure that you like this video because if you guys like it, then I know you want it more. All right, now back to the video. I decided to fight a blight pillager inside of the little castle there. That's a blight pillager over there. It demolished me it broke through the brick wall uh, and literally one shot me they drop a lot of xp 
but they do a, like they they're stupid strong though uh oh there goes everything there goes all of our stuff luckily for me our stuff didn't burn for some reason so everything was fine what the f you broke the block how how did he break the block i do it i won't eventually i killed him and i got nearly 20 levels of xp I also grabbed some obsidian from the village so I can make an enchanting table. Here it is. Yes. Okay. Oh, this is this is really turning around now. Moment of truth. Boom. Enchanting table. <laughs> I just. Oh, I literally just did it. Oh my. Uh, I decided since I've already made the enchanting table, I was just going to take all the books from the room here and make my own bookshelves so I could make my own enchanting okay. table room somewhere else. Well, I'm, don't mind me. I'm going to take the bookshelves. Okay. I then started to build the ooze farm, and it was a similar build to the other one, except this one didn't use dispensers. All I had to do was place the ooze buckets in the bottom, and it would spawn some things. And I didn't have to worry about the stuff burning, because where the ooze wasn't flammable or destructive, everything was fine. But, unfortunately for us, yeah, we didn't have enough good. ooze. So I had to go back, and I had to get some more. I'm but when I was going hooks. back to get the ooze, it was starting to get late. So I had to be extra careful, because some scary things spawned in the winter biomes during night. So we do not want to be near any of this ooze when it's night. Heat. <laughs> Like that. I was about to say otherwise W word spawn. Oh my god, a W word spawn. Oh my god, a W word spawn. Oh shoot, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta get we gotta go. Regardless, I got the ooze and it worked. Our spawner started the work. Oh work. it happened! Look at that! Oh boys, it doesn't have to be night. Oh ha 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 ha. Excitement indeed. I then used some silk and heating goo to make some heated lining pants. Keep our junk nice and warm. That way, we can stay warm because it's winter now. Oh, jeez. The next day, I got in a fight with a weird bird that shot arrows at us. What the heck are you? And why is my inventory being weird? The bird dropped some feathers, which we could use to make an avian saddle, which was amazing because now all I have to do is get some troll leather and we could have a flying mount. A bird shot arrows at me. Wait a hot second. Shut up. I just got feathers for an avian saddle. Shut up. All I need to kill is some trolls now and we can get a... Well, no way. Can get uh, a rock, which is like a giant bird mount. Oh, dude, 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 dude. This is really good. This is actually like really, really good. I don't know why that thing was there, but I'm so happy it was. Oh my God. That's actually so good. Ooh. Ah, ah, ah. Oh my God. There's acid. Okay. I can make an Exxon. Oh my God. I can make an Exxon farm. While I was getting the feathers, oh, I realized that there was acid, so I could make a new mob farm. When I got back to the house, I decided to put on some diamond armor because I managed to get level 16 in defense. I also had enough shards to make a heart crystal. So I went and made one of those and I increased our health even more. Another heart container. And it's day 65. When I was done doing that, I went out with those buckets that I got from before and I went and collected eight buckets of acid because I wanted to make an exophant That's farm. Cool. I then found this weird desert village where they had some pretty cool yeah. enchants on some tools. Really so shovel, of course I bought so. some, including this diamond tool and a really good shovel. And look yeah, how good this shovel is. That. It'll make getting sand for glass so much Time easier. the new shovel, boys. Oh. Shut up. Nice. That is disgusting. I'm gonna make sure I don't break this thing. Cool. I then made myself a diamond shield. Now virtually nothing can get through our shield. After that, I reforged all my diamond armor, trying to get some better quality on them. And then I started making the X event farm. Now this took a while to make. Throughout the next couple days, I'm gonna be picking it apart and trying to make it. I should have just searched up a YouTube video on how to do this, but no, no, my own arrogance figured I could do it on my own. Who needs instructions? You can figure it out, sure. Yeah, it was pretty stupid. It took me a long time to figure it out, but I'm gonna say that the next couple days are gonna go pretty quickly. It's just gonna be little snippets of me making it, along with some interesting things that happened as the days went by it is day 69 nice or did i need even more space 
Hey, there we go, fellas. The farm design yeah, I originally came yeah. up with wasn't working because all of their drops and XP were just being eviscerated by the acid. So, of course, I spent the next couple of days trying to redesign it. By the way, I apologize for the game audio. For some reason, my game audio and my mic converged and corrupted. So now you can only hear my voice if there's gameplay audio. Oh, yeah. And also, we had an event called Eruption. And this event literally made me erupt in my pants. I was so scared. Are you kidding me with this? Eruption. The world what the f is that? <laughs> oh, f right off. I panically jumped into the water trying to get away from the flames, and I dug a hole into the ground underwater, which was smart, but stupidly, I panicked about losing our stuff and dug my way back out to try to save some. I am f that. <laughs> Just f that. Shut up. That. No, f***ing house is gonna burn down. I should have just stayed in my hole. I don't know what I was thinking. Literally, the cobblestone above my head turned to lava and killed me. I kept trying to go back to see if our house was on fire because I wanted to make sure we didn't lose literally everything. So guess what? You get to have a death count with me. One death. Ha ha ha. Two death. Three death. Four death. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. When's it gonna stop? Are you serious? And then it finally happened. I loaded back in, and there was nothing. There was nothing there to kill me. Oh, everything despawned. Okay, thank fuck. I ran to our house with anticipation oh, and fear of what to come. Oh, and I noticed we got house. so lucky. Our mob Shut spawners up. weren't destroyed. Everything was harm free. They didn't destroy all the shit. Our house, it was burned to ashes, but our chests were avoided. Somehow, the only important things oh, in our houses. entire house houses. were untouched. Oh my God. Wait. Shut up. Uh, our stuff survived. Shut the f up. No shot. We had only lost the things that we had on our person, which was completely recoverable. For lucky for us, we had tons of diamonds and we just set up an exophant farm, meaning that we could start working on some Aussie liners. So there was virtually no way that we could mess this up. All we had to do was take our time, make some new diamond armor and grind out some Aussie liners. So that way we could go out safely since it was winter. So that's exactly what I did. I made myself a bunch of diamond armor and a diamond shield and a new diamond sword. So we got Keen. Ooh, okay, Keen's actually nice. Since we're literally <laughs> just grinding slime balls from Exophants so we can make some Aussie uh, gear, these next couple days will go very quickly. So I spent several days working on the Exophant farm, trying to perfect it so it would work well. And then I also went and got a bunch of wool from other villages, just wool. breaking their walls and collecting all the wool I could so I can make it into string to make some more Aussie lining fabric. Of... I finally perfected the Exophant farm and it was going to work well. Meaning that now we can finally get slime balls so we can start working on the Aussie liner properly. On top of that, we have three sources of easy levels now, meaning that later on we can get some fancy ass enchantments. I used the slimes and some blaze powder to make some heating goo, and then I continued grinding X fans to get even more slimes and started to make some heated lining fabric so that way I can make an Aussie liner soon. By the way, I forgot to mention, mob farming in this game isn't safe. You thought it'd be an easy way to get XP. It's not, because there's these things called Arguses that spawn when you kill lots of things from the chaotic energy you release. They, of course, try to kill you. And you know what the worst thing is? Is that they can combine with an Aegis to turn into a literal suck machine and just vacuum you in with you? its giant teeth and just, it looks like a rib cage that uh, grabs you and eats you and uh, I hate him so much. What the f is that? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> He's in the house. I was smart and dug a hole so I can get my stuff back. I managed to kill the suck machine. Barely though. Shut up. No way I just killed that thing. Oh, let's go. Let's actually, like actually, that's really actually, like that is, that is really good. I then ditched all my armor inside of a chest because I didn't want to lose it for something like that happening again while I'm just trying to grind some Aussie liners. 
After that, I combined some cooling goo with some string to make some cooling liner. And then I combined that cooling liner with the warming liner I already had to make an Aussie liner. I had eight Aussie liner fabric, so of course I made an Aussie lining chest plate. And then I decided that I wanted to work on some more pieces because I'm still freezing my bum off. Okay. But for now, I decided just to make some warming booties because I wanted to keep my toes warm. I was afraid they were gonna fall off if I waited any longer. God damn, warm me up, you birds. Also, to avoid me from getting sucked off my platform, I decided to make a glass dome over the roof so they couldn't get to us anymore. I then grinded some more levels and slime balls before placing a bed down inside of our glass dome because I wanted to move our sleeping area into somewhere that was a bit safer. The next day, I went to the town's library and it destroyed a bunch of bookshelves so I could get a bunch of books because I wanted to build an enchanting room under our mob farm. So that's exactly what I did. I dug out an area under our mob farm placed down an enchanting table and a bunch of bookshelves. After that, I went inside of that weird temple we were at before where we died, and I decided that I wanted to try to get a bunch of wool from the wall because we needed a lot more string to make all those Aussie liners. I also used some of the string to finally make myself a new bow, except I wanted to make a good bow this time. So I made a diamond long bow. Only thing is I needed 12 levels in agility in order to use it. But before that, I wanted to make myself a quiver. So I went and I upgraded to a moderate arrow quiver and I got incredibly lucky and got the Reforge Undying, which is the best possible Reforge that you can have on any bobble. It gives you plus three damage resistance, plus two max health, magic shielding. It's just so good. After that, I made two potion rings and I reforged both of them to get healthy on each so we could have some more health, getting our health up to a massive amount. We almost had two rows of hearts. I then made some chest and I placed them down inside of our enchanting room because I wanted to move everything from our old base into our little base here because it felt like it was a lot safer here. I then placed a bunch of glass down, filling in the rest of our mob farm so it was completely safe before going and getting a bunch of stuff from our old base and transferring it into our new base. I then crafted some glowstone blocks and placed them down inside our enchanting room to light it all up. After that, I made some more Aussie liner fabric and then I turned them into some Aussie lining pants because I was getting really cold. I then made a heart crystal to get my health up before making a summoning staff because we lost ours earlier. I then used some of the XP I got from grinding to enchant our shield, getting empowered defense on it. I then spent the next three days trying to find somewhere to get a lot more XP. Coming across a dungeon, I decided that it would probably be a good idea to explore it. I spent days 88 to 89 grinding in the dungeon and nothing really happened too notable other than us finally getting another Beazar from a bunch of poisonous spiders. Ah, BSR. And getting up to level 30 from killing tons of zombies and stuff. After that, I decided I should leave because all the chests I looted had literally nothing but bones and health potions. So it was completely useless there. We got 30 levels. I haven't found all. When I got home, I decided to use the 30 levels of XP I got to enchant my chest plate. It said that I had thorns too, and I was hoping that I would get protection or unbreaking with the thorns too. I didn't. I just got thorns too. It was very unfortunate, but it was okay because I'd only used three out of the 30 levels we had, meaning that we could just grind a bit using the mob farm and get some more levels to enchant some more gear. So that's what blessed I did. Edge. I got back up to level 30 and I decided to blessed enchant my sword, getting blessed what? edge and purging blade, which what? seemed like it'd be good, but it wasn't really that good. With my new enchantments, I decided that I wanted to go into the caves to try to find some cave trolls because I really needed cave troll leather in order to make an avian saddle. But this proved to be a big mistake because I made one wrong turn and I got bum rushed by a rare variant of a chupacabra and a two rare variants of darklings. <laughs> Oh, what the? Bro. 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 So I went back down there with some iron gear and a diamond sword to try to kill them. Getting him down to literally one HP. I could have hit him with my fist and he would have died. He's one shot are you serious i went back down there with an iron saber and managed to take him out and got all of our stuff back we did lose a lot of levels though unfortunately i then started mining some iron inside of the caves when i got attacked by a scarlet grew which is a rare variant of a grew that is super strong and it nearly took us out luckily for me though a because we had such a tanky shield we were able to take him out without too many issues what did i do to you game what what did i do to you is there not enough torches for you? Is this not enough? I then got into a fight with a blight skeleton and using my diamond bow, he was taken care of pretty easily, getting us back up to 24 levels.
After exploring some more, I got into another fight with a Blight, this time being a zombie. But I killed him without any issues, and he dropped a legendary spear with sharpness 2. So now we have a ranged weapon that does massive damage. I then decided that I wanted to go back up to the mob farm and grind some more levels, only to spawn a Blight Reaper who had burning thorns. So every time we hit him, it burned us. What? Oh, was that was a Blight? Oh. It destroyed us, but after a while, I managed to kill him and got so much XP for it, which was, I think, worth it because it kind of balanced out the fact that he lost so much XP from dying from him. Yeah, that was a lot of XP, so it was definitely worth it. I crafted another heart crystal, getting us one heart away from two full bars of health. I then enchanted our bow with strafe two, Please. and I ended up getting arrow recovery with it, arrow which was okay. Arrow recovery and strafe, okay. All right, you know what? Listen, it's not good, <laughs> but... At least it's not bad. I then spent a couple of days exploring when I ended up falling across this big tree. What is that? That's a big old tree. Which was really cool, and I decided to explore it. Luckily for me, inside that tree, we found some brown mushrooms. There is a brown mushroom in there. Meaning that now we can make a bunch of fermented spider eyes and combine it with our BSR to make a new bobble. But before I wanted to make that bobble, I climbed to the top of the tree to see if there was anything up there where I found this weird throne and really nothing else. So I decided to just go home and make my bobble. On the way home, I found this weird dwarven kind of camp thing. So I explored it. Inside, I found some cool stuff, including Whoa. tons of food and enough wood where I made myself a stack of lock picks. I then decided that I wanted to try unlocking one of the diamond lock chest here using those lock picks and check out these lock picking skills. Although it did take me about 15 lock picks. Inside was literally the most useless stuff ever and I wasted about 30 minutes doing this. Oh wow! <laughs> so good! Lots of stuff I totally needed. Like nothing at all. Inside was just more wood, so I just replenished my lockpicks and I left. Although, before I left, I found one good thing. A golden crown inside of a random chest. Which means that later on, hopefully, I can make a pride what? amulet. You can use it to make a pride pendant. And I couldn't manage to stay focused on the task of just going home, because I ended up hitting a battle tower on the way home. This was a strange battle tower, though, this since it was structured was completely differently and there was no yeah. battle golem. Regardless, I decided to take it on, and got tons of XP. Okay, that one went away a little easier. Oh my god, we have so many levels. Holy heck. So then I continued making my way home, Lux? where I ran into a Lux Crake, and this is the first Lux variant of any mob I've seen in this entire 100 days. I've never even seen the Lux color up things before. I finally made it home on day 95 and I enchanted a brand new diamond saber with vampirism okay, one vampirism. and a couple That's other cool enchantments five. on it. Okay. I mean, listen, it's vampirism. I'm pretty happy with vampirism. I then enchanted my helmet with aqua affinity and magic protection two before enchanting my pants with prop four and luckily getting agility two on them with the prop four, meaning that now we can move a lot faster. I then crafted some fermented spider eyes from the mushrooms and stuff we had before, before crafting some glowing ingots, so that way I could combine them with the BSR and the spider eyes okay. to make a so poison stone. Ingots. Meaning that now we had immunity to poison, and when we hit things, we poisoned them. Yeah, let's go. I then enchanted our boots with Prot 4 and ended up with Depth Strider 3, which was really good. So then I decided that I wanted to use my Feather Falling 4 book to attach it to my boots, giving my boots Feather Falling 4, Depth Strider 3, Unbreaking 3, and Prot 4. I also had an Ancient Tome that had Feather Falling 4 on it, meaning that if I held my boots and my tome, I could upgrade my boots to Feather Falling 5, making it so we virtually could not die from fall damage. Does give me Feather Falling 5? <laughs> It did. I wanted to go back to the caves to try to find some troll leather, but before I was able to leave, I got blocked in by another suck machine. Luckily for me though, my ages were there. So I decided to just throw them at them and hope the for the room, best. I don't have a block to replace it with. At least I do. Ha <laughs> Go my child. Distract him for your father die for the cause <laughs> yes rally your friends die for the cause 
Right, I'm leaving. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Inside the caves, I found tons of heart crystal shards, which was great because we could get some more hearts. Along with that, I found tons of emeralds. Also, by the way, I left our cave and I went to a completely different cave. While I was down there, though, I found a heart of a diamond from a weird stone Shut creature. Shut the front door. Shut the front door. No way. I can make a thing of resistance now. Dude, that's so good. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! What the f*** is that? I then got attacked by a Lux suck machine with a bunch of these blue elemental creatures and I barely got out of there with my life. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I do not know how I got out of that alive. I then used the heart of the diamond to make a resistance potion ring, meaning that now we have a permanent resistance boost, which is great. I also then decided to make a speed ring and I reforged both of my rings, getting some really cool reforges on them. All right, if I get healthy again, I'll take it. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's nice, actually. And then I made myself another heart crystal before heading into a cave up by Raya Lork in the snow biome, Shut where I managed up. to okay. finally uh, find some trolls. I was so excited, and I managed to go fight them all. I sicked my Aegis on them and took them out no problem, getting only one tusk, which is the exactly the amount yes. we needed to make our avian saddle. Okay, 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 okay. Uh... Yes, boys. Oh, we've done it. One of the trolls also dropped their axe. And look how cool this is. It's massive. We look crazy oh, swinging this thing around. Whoa. Holy heck, look how big this thing is. I then went home and finally crafted an avian saddle. I'm going to try my absolute hardest to go and try to tame a rock since we only have two days left and I wanted one so bad before the 100 days ended. Guaranteeing that in the next 100 days, we can do so much. So I started cooking a bunch of silix meat and then I used that silix meat to make some avian treats. <gasps> There's a rock. Ah! I managed to find a rock and I fed him just under two Wait. stacks of avian treats and finally ah! tamed him. Meaning that now Let's we go! had a flying mount and the next 100 days were going to be amazing. I threw the saddle onto my rock and nice. I took him for a little ride. Isn't he cool? This is so fun and I love it so much. Also, by the way, I decided to name the rock Jawayne. Like Dwayne, but with a J. So his name is Jawayne. I wanted to take Jawayne out for an adventure, but I was afraid that I would lose him. So I decided to make a soul stone, which permanently bonds him to my soul, meaning that he is a mortal and we can just summon him whenever we want. So I smacked Jawayne in the face with that soul stone and now he's bound to me forever. He's immortal now because he uses a soul stone. So if he dies, we can always just get him back. Meaning that at no point now, will we just be like eternally lost, unable to get our stuff back. We will always be able to fly over and get new stuff out of a new battle tower. While I was exploring with Jawang, I ended up finding a dead dragon and I do not want to find out what killed him. So I quickly grabbed all the bones and I vanished as fast as I was there. And then while I was on the way back, for the first time in this playthrough, I got grabbed by a siren. Essentially, sirens will sing their songs and they're so stupid. Your character goes pussy blind and he just goes and draw to them. There's nothing you can do about it. He just gets pulled into them. He, he becomes a simp. He just, it's a simp, it's a simp song. It's a simp song. The song turns him into a simp. Also, before we got back, I found yet another dragon skeleton, and this one was huge. So I grabbed all the bones, and yet again, I booked out of there as fast as I could, because I didn't want to be caught in whatever killed him. Technically, at this point, it's day 101, but don't hold the gun to my head. I thought it'd be really cool if I could make a dragon bone rapier before I ended the video. Look at this thing. It's so cool. Also, wanted it for the thumbnail. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I had to do it to you. It looks good in the thumbnail. What can I say? I wanted to do something different for the end of this video. I decided that it would be really interesting to let you guys choose the next video. So I'm giving you options one to four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the comments and I'm gonna pin each comment 
being numbered from one to four. And you guys like whatever one you want and whatever one gets the most likes in the first two days is what I'll do the next 100 days on. Option one is Waffles modded one block where it's just you and one infinite respawning block and the void. There's tons of bosses and really cool elements to it. Can I rebuild civilization or will I fall victim to the void? Number two is Seopolis two which is just you and the open ocean with tons of tech, ducks, boats, and weird things. Will I be able to find myself a home or will I drown trying? And then we have number three, Better Minecraft, which is a mod pack full of crazy dimensions, awesome features, just a lovely mod pack all together. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at some of the scenery. This is just some of the stuff. Some of the dimensions include the Aether, the Twilight Zone, and a bunch more that I don't remember. And finally, last but not least, another 100 days with me and Jawang in RLCraft, where hopefully I'll be getting ready to battle some dragons. Or at the very least, I'll be getting on with some shenanigans with Jawang hitting every battle tower in a 1,000 mile vicinity. So that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed. And like, comment, and subscribe for more. That's been everything. Have a good night.